sorry. Good morning, everyone. I got excited. I'm excited to sing this morning. I'm excited to see everybody here this morning. Will you rise as you're able and join us in singing? We're going to bring back the song we were doing last week so Auntie Roger can have her solo. So here we go. We're going to do step by step. Step by step, we've come to praise the Lord. Step by step, according to the word. Step by step, no one can put us out. We've come today to sing our praises and shout. Let's do that again. Step by step. We've come to praise the Lord, step by step, according to the word, step by step, no one can put us out, we've come today to sing our praises and shout. Come on, Roger, here we go. We've gathered here from the north, south, east, and west. And we're so filled with joy, we're truly, truly blessed. I may not know the trials and troubles of each of you, but I can truly say I've been healed through and through. Step by step, we've come to praise the Lord. Step by step, According to the word, step by step, no one can put us out. We've come today to sing our praises and shout. Step, no one to praise the Lord. Step by step, according to the word. Step by step, no one can put us out. We've come today to sing our praises and shout. We've come to praise the Lord. 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 We've come today to sing our praises and shout. One more time, step by step. Step by step. We've come to praise the Lord, step by step, according to the word, step by step, no one can put us out. We've come today to sing our praises, we've come today to sing our praises, we've come today to sing our praises. All right. Amen. Amen. 
imagine. Be who you are. Practice what you know. Teach what you learn. And continue to grow. Just imagine. Just imagine that you're smarter than you know. More courageous than you guess. Stronger than you feel. Healthier than you're aware of. More creative than you believe. More capable than you recognize. You are more powerful than you think. More attractive than you assume. Wiser than you suppose. More valuable than you've ever been told. And you're able to make a difference in the world that you've not yet begun to realize. Just imagine. to be worshiping together, to open ourselves up and to, well, imagine. A very special welcome if this is the first time that you are worshiping with us. If you're a first-time visitor, please let us know. We've got a little bit of information. We've got some flowers for our first-time visitors. So let us know if this is the first time that you're worshiping here. Thank you for being with us today. It is always a joy. We um, do remind everybody, especially our first-time visitors, that following our closing song, we do have snacks and coffee um, downstairs in our fellowship hall. Um, it's just around the corner and downstairs. Um, we've, we invite you to come on down there so that we may be community not just in and at worship, but after worship as well. And I'd like to give a very special shout-out to uh, one of our first-time visitors, um, who is Bobby Hunt. Bobby is here because um, he's going to be doing a, a brief presentation downstairs in Founders Theater immediately following the 11 o'clock worship service. Um, Bobby, um, he's got um, a, a, a product, I guess. It's, it's a form of life insurance. It helps you to prepay for your funerals. And so if that's something that's on your mind, you want to get a little bit more information, we do invite you to stop on down there. Uh, he does this at a number of different churches. There is no association or affiliation with MCC. We do not necessarily endorse the product, and we do not get any kind of financial compensation. Um, it's just something that we think is a good thing for you to be thinking about. And so if this makes sense for you, we do invite you to stop on down and see, um, see Mr. Hunt following um, our closing song um, today. A very special welcome to everybody who's joining us online from around the world. It is indeed a joy and a blessing to know that as we worship here that, that you're joining us from wherever you may be, wherever you are in your life journey or literally wherever you may physically be around the world. Please take a moment and scroll down to the bottom of the screen where you're watching this broadcast. There is a, a place where you can enter in your information, give us your prayer requests, let us know what you think about worship so that we can know how to support you wherever you may be on your life or spiritual journey. And to everybody who is here, um, again, it is just a joy and a blessing. Um, it feels like it's been a while since I've been here. Last, last Sunday was an absolute joy. Um, I, I heard that we had wonderful, wonderful worship. And thank you again, Reverend Barber, for, for standing in. Um, I, I went home to see my family for Father's Day, and it's the first time in, in my long-term memory that I can remember being home for Father's Day, so um, it was a blessing to be freed up so that I could actually do that um, and spend a little time with my family. So thank you all um, for helping to make that possible. I now in, oh, I have one other thing. Um, if you were, you know, yesterday we had this amazing experience. Um, there were over 35 people who came out for our leadership um, retreat, which is just amazing. <laughs> Art, Art and I were setting up, Art Fisher, we were setting up um, just as we were getting ready for that, and, and he said, so how many chairs and tables should we set up? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'd be delighted if 12 people come. I'd be ecstatic if 20 people come. 35 people. The energy was amazing. The conversation was great. I believe that this congregation is well prepared and continuing to prepare itself for the future that God has invited you to. So thank you, everybody who came out. Um, if you made it, um, if you came out, um, please just raise your hand. Um, so thank you. Thank each and every one of you. And, and for those who didn't, for those who weren't able to make it, we are going to be publishing the material. And also, I encourage you to talk to these individuals who did come and find out what was so magical about yesterday. And now, speaking of magic, I invite you to rise as you're able and share the magic of God's love being sent to one another as we greet each other and welcome them to worship.
This morning's first scripture reading is taken from Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18a, from the King James Version. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm not going back, I'm moving on. Please rise as you're able as we hear God's vision for all creation as described in chapter 21 of the revelation of Jesus Christ. God made it known by sending an angel to John, the faithful subject, who, in writing down everything he saw, bears witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Then I saw new heavens and a new earth. The former heavens and the former earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride bride and groom on their wedding day. And I heard a loud voice calling from the throne, Look, God's tabernacle is among humankind. God will live with them. They will be God's people, and God will be fully present among them. The Most High will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death, mourning, crying, and pain will be no more, for for the old order has fallen. The one who sat on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new, and added, Write this, for what I am saying is trustworthy and true. And the one continued, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To those who are thirsty, I will give drink freely from the spring of the water of life. This is the rightful inheritance of the overcomers. I will be their God and they will be my daughters and sons. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God.
please be seated. <sighs> Are you ready to imagine? Yes. I mean, my goodness, after those two opening songs, all things are possible, not only all things made new. Are you ready to imagine, to play again, to just open yourselves up? Imagine. Imagine that you truly are more than you realize. Um, imagine that you are more wonderful, more beautiful, more fabulously made than you could ever possibly imagine, more creative than you ever hoped for, more desirable than you ever could think of more capable and more powerful than your wildest dreams. What would it mean to you if you could hold on to that vision for yourself? What would it look like when you got up in the morning, when you rolled out of bed, if that was the feeling that welcomed you when you looked yourself in the mirror, when you went down the street, when life dealt with you one of those left-hand turns that you didn't quite expect and things didn't quite go your way? If you're holding on to that energy, that idea that you are more than you could ever imagine, what would that mean to you? But let's not leave it there. Let's go a little further. Let's move a little further forward. What would it mean if we imagined, if you look around the sanctuary, if you imagined the person three rows in front of you or to your left or to your right, or that person who said something that didn't quite set so well, or the person you've yet to forgive, what if you imagined that they were more wonderful, more gracious, more forgiving, more talented than you could ever hope for or imagine? What if you imagined that they held the piece to a puzzle and the answer to a question that you haven't yet even begun to answer? Would that cause your heart to sing? And what kind of healing might that bring? Can you just imagine? And, and let's go a little further on. What about this community? What if we, as a community, what if we held on to that kind of playful imagination? What if we imagined that we had everything that we already need? If we lived as though we believed that God was giving birth to something amazing and wonderful within us and through us? What if we imagined that everything that has happened up to this day, the, 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 the things that we celebrate and the things that we are sorrowful for, if all of that was giving us the capability for us to be God's arms and hands and hearts, thrown open to heal this hurting world. What would that look like when we walk through this, this sanctuary? What would that look like when we talk to a stranger on the street and tell them of this wonderful, incredible story that is yet unfolding as we open up to spirit and imagine? I believe that this is the gift that we get. The book of Revelation, at the very end, chapters 21 and 22, I believe that they lay out for us what is the vision of all creation. Leadership guru Stephen Covey, he wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And the second habit happens to be, begin with the end in mind. And I believe that whatever we're thinking about, whatever we want to do, if we understand that we truly are children of the living God, that we are made in God's image, and you want to wonder what is the purpose of your life, and how do you use the gifts that you've been given, and what is the purpose of a community and a congregation like us, you can look to the story in, in, Ge in, in Genesis. You can look to some of the words of the prophet. And over and over and over again, what you are going to find is that they are using words. And the words and the imagery, when Christ describes the kingdom of heaven, it all points forward to these two chapters at the very end of what we call the Bible, chapter 20 and, uh, 21 and 22 in Revelation, where we get this incredible vision of what it looks like at the culmination the culmination of all things, when God makes all things new. That's what it's all about, what it looks like. Imagine this. There is no separation between heaven and earth. Heaven comes down to earth. God is living among and with the people. We are not fragmented. We are not separated, not from God and not from one another, and certainly not from ourselves. The energy that runs throughout all of creation is energizing us and giving new life each day day. There is no more tears and no more sorrow. There is no more death and no more disease because life is lived for the living, that God is present with the people and healing flows in and out of us because of the ways that we are now relating. This is God's vision and God's vision happens 
Because all of the old ways, the ways of fear, the way of structure, the way of control, all of those old ways get swept away. This new vision of all things being made new comes at a cost, and it's the cost of all things that oppress. It's the cost of all things that have hold, held us back. It is the cost of being to, able to let go of all of our mistakes, missteps, misunderstandings, all of the things that have held us down and that we use to hold others down. The cost is that we need to let them go and let them die in order for God's kingdom to reign within us, for God's love to pour out from us, for us to totally reorganize the way that we think about who we are in relationship to ourselves, to one another, to creation, and to God Almighty. This is the vision, and I do not believe that this is a vision for, you know, I don't know, when global warming is so severe that the whole oceans dry up and are no longer there. I don't believe that that's what Revelation is talking about. I do not believe that this is the time for us to sit there and wait until the tyrants finally find their end. This is a happening thing right now in the here and in the now. I believe that in our relationships, the way that we work with one another, the way that we love one another, the way that we serve towards this greater vision that God is calling us toward, that in those moments that we share with one another, in community, working and using our gifts in order to bring healing to, and hope to the people, I believe that we glimpse, even in a moment, in this mystical, magical presence, in the time and the space that we share with one another, we glimpse all things made new. We glimpse what it feels like to be fully integrated and in relationship with ourselves and with one another and with creation and with the living God. It means that we become that new creation over and over and over again. Yes, yes, yes. If this is God's vision from the beginning, you got to ask. This is like a 5,000-year-old religion. It's 2,000 years old if you begin with Christ. It's like 5,000 if you go all the way back to Abraham. So why haven't we got there yet? <laughs> Seriously. I don't care what other visions that we want to create, whatever projects that we have. Whatever great ideas may come out of this mind, once in a while I have a few. <laughs> Unless it's aligned with God's vision. Unless the way that we are using our presence and our gifts in ways that they take baby steps forward even for a minute or for a moment for us to become expressions of this kind of love where tears are wiped away and those who mourn are comforted and death and decay is swept away and our mistakes are obliterated. Unless we are doing that, we are not living God's vision. We're living to something else. And the thing is, we live within a world that is filled with fear. We live in a time that is filled with anxiety. And when we have fear and when we have anxiety, we lose hope. And what do we do? We turn to the biggest strong man, and I don't know, we elect him to some sort of office. <laughs> we want somebody else to take care of our problems for us. We want to find a scapegoat in order to put all that anxiety on and send them out into the world. We live with all of this stuff that obscures and fragments our view to what God's vision really is. You know what I'm talking about. There are things like worrying about whether I'm going to heaven or hell. There are all those things that define success that I like sacrifice in, in, in my life about. They're worrying about what should I do with my life and what should I be or where am I going or what will so-and-so think or I don't know, hashtag Kofifi. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like there was an awful lot of chatter about that and I still have no idea what that's all about. But there were a lot of people who were worried one way or another. It's about worrying about access to health care and all of the systems that prevent who can actually get access to what. It's about how should I act and who's going to worry about things. It's about hunger and poverty. Am I worthy? Am I worth it? Am I lovable? Am I loved? It's worrying about the economy and what my boyfriend will think and my girlfriend will think and my parents will think and my BFFs. It's worrying about STDs, whether I have them or whether I'll catch them or whether they'll be solved or whatever's going to happen. Is there going to be enough health care to solve all that? It's about global warming. It's the worry about do I have enough? Can I get more? Do I have mine? Am I in control? Do I have power? It's all the worry about terrorism and all the anxiety that that creates. It's worrying about things like, am I sexy? Or being preoccupied with all the kinds of violence that is in the world. 
These are all of the things that get in the way. Yes, sir. And this is the wisdom for me of that small little fragment of a scripture that we read that comes out of Proverbs. I love the King James Version of that particular scripture because it says the truth. There is so much truth in that. Without a vision, the people perish. This is what happens. If we don't have a vision for ourselves, if our vision is not connected to God's vision for us, what ends up happening is we give our vision, our life, our time, our resources over to whoever is willing to sweet talk us into coming along and we become preoccupied with all of these things that diminish and distract and ruin our relationship and fragment ourselves and our hope. This is the reality of the world that we're in. But there's good news, people. <laughs> so, you know, here's how it works its way out for me. So, I'm going to tell you, it's very easy for all of us, including myself, to get preoccupied with all those things. And so, there was a time way back when, I don't know, 20 years ago, who knows when, but I was a business consultant at the time. And our group, it was a global group, we were gathered up from all of these different places. We were required to show up to some place in Northern California for a three-day conference meeting. And it was obligatory. We didn't know what the actual subject was going to be. We just knew that we had to show up at a certain time in a certain place, and we better be there. And so we all complied. And so we gathered at breakfast, and we all talked with this big mystery, trying to figure out what this was all about. And then we collectively went to the conference room, which was on our agendas when we walked in and checked into the hotel, that told us that this is where we needed to be at this appointed time. And so we all go in in ones and twos, and we're chatting, and as people make, about, make it about three or four feet into that room, they just organically, naturally come to a silent, surprising halt. Like, you can hear kind of, it's like this wave of silence that moves through that column as we move into the, into the room. And so once we're all gathered in there, what has caught our attention and has thrown us off guard is that we're in this long conference room, and it's like, I mean, 25, 30 feet or so long, and who knows how wide. And the only thing that is in there, other than the stupefied 16 people that I'm part of this group with, is at the far end, there is this six foot tall by four foot wide, big green, like, like, like grass green piece of fabric, and there are three white concentric circles that are painted in the middle of it. We have no idea what is about to transpire. And we actually begin even wondering, are we like in the right room? <laughs> like, you know, where are the tables? Where are the chairs? Where are the pencils? Well, after about three or four minutes, all of a sudden, this very optimistic, very cheerful fellow walks in, carrying a small little putter and a basket of little golf balls that have been decorated in all different kinds of colors. There, there's a different color for each and every one of us. And they've all been surrounded with Velcro. And he walks in, and, and right there, like 25 or so feet away from this, this green target, he, he just he says good morning to us, and then he just goes about his business. He puts down one of those Velcro golf balls, and, and he just takes that putter, and he hits it just so, and it arcs, and it lands bullseye right in the center of this. Now, we're really all confused and very mystified. And so he looks at us, and he asks if any would like to take a shot. Would any, uh, any of you like to join us? And nobody is willing to risk the embarrassment. <laughs> and so he says, okay, he says, here, you know, let's start off a little closer. And so he takes his little tee and his marker and he moves it up about six or eight feet off of the target. And he invites each one of us, invites, we're all required to do this. He invites each one of us to actually go and take our turn trying to make a bullseye. And one by one we go, and they go left and they go right. Um, eventually I'm near the end of the pack, and I go, um, and I'm so stressed out and so worried and so filled with anxiety about what people are going to think, and having seen the success and lack of success of my peers, as, as I take that putter and I come with the downstroke, I completely close my eyes and I wince. I wince. And, and as I do so, that little piece of metal hits that poor little innocent ball, and I give it just the right arc and just enough energy that it doesn't go left or right, what I was worried about. It actually arcs up and over the back of the target, and it ricochets off of the window and the hard back supporting the target. And I don't know, it must have bounced like four or five times, but it felt like 5,000. 
And, and, and this overly optimistic facilitator says, that's a rare shot, to which, <laughs> not to be outdone, to which one of my colleagues says, extra points for creativity. <laughs> and so we have a laugh, and it kind of you know, dissipates some of the anxiety, and we're all well and good. And then the facilitator begins, and he starts to explain. And he asks us, what did it feel like, and what were you thinking? And as you like, lined up the ball on the tee, like, what did you focus on and what were you thinking? And to a person, every one of us said pretty much, I didn't want to miss. I didn't want to go left. I didn't want to go right. I just didn't want to miss. And, and we find out that this is exactly the point of why we've gathered for three days. What we do in the care of this facilitator for the next three days is he helps us to unpack and unlearn all of the things that we hold on to that distract us from what our ultimate goals and vision is. What we actually find out is that if, if you want to hit the target, you've got to focus on hitting the target. If you want to live to God's vision, we have to focus on living to God's vision. All of the things that distract us and worry us actually dissipate our energy and pull us away. What you focus on is what grows. What you focus on is where you will go. So if we want love, we need to be loving. If we want just, justice, we need to be just. It is the way that it works. If we want to live into this beautiful vision that we see from Revelation, where all things are made new, we need to be willing to live in ways that we are fully integrated with ourselves and one another and with the Spirit of the living God. We need to open ourselves up and let the Spirit of the living God guide us and challenge us. And most importantly, what I learned on that particular day and what I think that we learned from the Scripture in the book of Revelations is in order for all things to be made new, all of the old structures that confine us and hold us back, that oppress us, need to, be, need to die and fall away. The amazing thing is you already have all the power that you need deep within you. Yes, sir. Step by step each day to take baby steps forward in order to live more fully and more wholly, in order to be the arms and the hope of love, to have the kind of life that you are hoping to lead and to exude the kind of energy that you hope the world is going to exude back onto you. And so we all stand there listening to him spout all, all of this positive thinking and getting rid of the knots and the ain'ts and the negatives. And we all sit there, and before we can form a collective eye roll and gasp, <laughs> he truly says this bit of wisdom. Whatever kind of life you want is the kind of life that you have the power to lead. If you want love, have love. If you want success, have success. Whatever it is, understand that this vision is so big, and if it is so big, it will lead you forward. I have no idea what his spirituality is. I have no idea what his religion is. I have no idea what his faith is. It doesn't matter. For me, what I hear in those words is I hear the people in the exodus being led out of oppression, being led by day by this pillar of smoke, and being led overnight by this pillar of fire. I hear a people who are on a journey, a pilgrim people who are so hungry to live in the love of the living God that we are willing to let go and exit and let die all of the old ways so that we may cross the wilderness, cross the river, and embrace our destiny to be the children of God that God created us to be. I believe, I believe, I believe in this vision. I believe that there is more power in imagination than there is in fear. I believe that there is more power in hope than there is in anxiety. I believe that God is with us wherever we are on the journey. And most importantly, what I believe is we, we open ourselves up to where spirit is leading. We are going to find that there is yet mystery and wonder as God's love and vision unfolds within us. Imagine this. So imagine, if you will, imagine what it would be like if we understood that the last 49 years, all of the celebrations and all of the sorrows, all of the triumphs and all of the challenges, if all of that was but preparation, the first chapter in an unfolding story of which we have all been invited and have the privilege to be a part of. Imagine what would it be like if we gathered together and talked to people 
here at the 11 o'clock service who are sitting in those pews, two or three pews away from you, or at the 9 o'clock service and at the 1.30 service, and if we shared our hurts and we shared our hopes and we wondered together, how do we organize ourselves so that we can take the magic of the vision and the love that we share out into the world to touch the hearts of the people who are hungering? Imagine, if you will, what would it be like if we really, truly lived and believed as though we already had everything we need right here, right now, to be God's holy people, embracing this vision and doing it with joy. You know, in order to get up to like chapter 21 or chapter 22 in the book of Revelations, there's like another 20 chapters you kind of have to work through. And, and, and if you actually take the time to read that, that's kind of some scary stuff. There's like all kinds of image and imagery. What happens in the first 20 chapters, I believe, is that it is a commentary of the political situation of that time. When it was unsafe to actually comment about tyrannical, oppressive regimes, I think that the imagery that is used is talking about the difference between the role of the life of a community gathered together as church where two or more are gathered in the spirit is presence, and a group of people who are gathered together for some sort of political or oppressive agenda or means. I believe that what we get in the first 20 chapters is a commentary on all of the kind of oppression that needs to be swept away, that we need to choose not to participate in, that we need to say the power of our imagination to live in hope and live in love, no matter what may come our way, is more powerful than anyone who may scream or yell or threaten. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's no wall. There is no wall around the movement of God's Holy Spirit in a movement that is compelled and propelled by love. Yes, and so, my friends, I pray that in the coming days, in the coming weeks, that we work with one another, that we open ourselves up, that we pray deeply, that we listen to the vision that God's Holy Spirit is always putting, already putting on our hearts, that we share that vision with one another, that we may collectively see and express and embrace this vision in this future that God is inviting us forward to experience. And in doing so, I will close and I will pray using the words of the Apostle Paul found in Ephesians 3.20. And so I pray that God will strengthen you inwardly with the power through the working of the Spirit and may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith so that you, being rooted and grounded in love, will be able to grasp fully the breadth and length and height and depth of Christ's love and experience this love that surpasses all understanding to God, to God whose power now is at work in us, who can do immensely more than we could ever hope for or imagine. To God be the glory in this church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, world without end. Amen. snuck out of the booth, <laughs> out of the tech booth for a minute. Let's welcome her.
defy explanation if you want of you paradise simply look around and view it anything you want to do with want to change the world there's nothing to it there is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. Living there, you'll be free if you truly wish to be. Begin with a spin traveling in the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. If you want a view, paradise, simply look around and view it anything you want to do it want to change the world there's nothing to it there is no place i know to compare with pure imagination so go there to be free if you truly wish to be Magical. <laughs> totally magical. Thank you for that. For those of you who are joining us online, in a few moments we are going to be celebrating communion. Communion at Founders Metropolitan Community Church and the Metropolitan Community Churches around the world is open to everybody, wherever they are on their life journey or spiritual journey and through the invent of modern technology, wherever you may be as you watch and participate in this worship service as well. And so we encourage you at this point to gather up the bread, the crackers, the juice, the wine, whatever it is that you have available that you would like to use for elements today to celebrate this incredible meal, this feast of love. If you gather them up now, you'll have them available so in a few minutes we can celebrate and participate in this joyful feast together. For everybody who is here, I do encourage you to take your newsletter um, your worship bulletin. It doubles as a newsletter. There is a lot that is happening in the month of July. July is hot. It is hot. Uh, there's a talent show on July 8th. There's, um, we're, we're, we're previewing um, some work of the Archives um, Committee and some of the, the history and the interviews um, in the courtyard on the, on the 22nd. Um, we've got the motivation, the vision going on. Um, I believe it's actually July 30th. Um, we're going to have the newcomers brunch on a Sunday worship. And then there is also um, this exciting opportunity for us to join together as a community and have a really compelling fundraiser. So there's a group that's been using our facility to do their rehearsals. Um, they're doing a rehearsal for a play that they're going to be premiering at a um, theater in Hollywood. But they are just so moved by the story of this congregation and the founding congregation of this building as well uh, that they have decided that they're going to do a special pro bono performance where all of the ticket sales are going to go for Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are invited to sell concessions, to produce programs with advertisements. All of that fundraising is going to go to support our programs. We need your help to make that event possible. 
And so Roger, who is singing in the choir and is also on our board, has agreed to be the person that you can go and talk to. We are going to organize that. We need people to run the technology, um, the lights, the sounds, to be greeters and ushers, to help with the marketing, the publicity, um, to help make the concessions and sell the concessions and whatever else it is that we want to do in order to turn this into a really special event. Um, there's a brief description of what the play is. It's actually on that Friday night, so I think that the date may be a little wrong. We'll get that all fixed. Um, but do take a look at that, and if you're interested in volunteering, um, please see Roger. We do need your help to make that happen. Um, as I mentioned at the opening of service, um, Bobby Hunt, who's in the back there, um, he is going to be around um, in the theater following our closing song. Um, he's going to talk to you about advanced planning for funerals, um, and he's got life insurance policies um, that can help you to pay that off so that your loved ones um, don't get um, overly stressed out at a very worrisome time. Um, this may or may not be for you. Again, it's not endorsed um, by Founders MCC, um, but he's done this at a number of different churches, and so um, he's just making it available if it interests you. Um, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Apologies to people in the medical profession. <laughs> but our food pantry um, w was blessed with a, 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 an extremely large donation of apples um, on, on Saturday, yesterday. So many that, that we were not able to distribute them all. And so there are a number of apples that are left over and they will not keep, especially in this heat. And so there's some apples as you exit. There are some apples downstairs in the fellowship hall. There are some apples out in the courtyard. We encourage you to adopt a couple <laughs> or more. And lastly, we are and we have entered into our vision phase. And so if God touches you and you've got a vision for what God is calling this community to be, um, we encourage you to write it down, draw it out. Um, if it's a vision, an image, a word, a phrase, um, this box is going to be seated at the back of the, the sanctuary over the next couple of weeks. Um, we do invite you. Um, to put your vision in. Um, everything that has been submitted, all of the visions, we will ultimately um, be sharing with you on the walls in the sanctuary so that everybody can see. Um, because uh, the whole idea of this process is that we wait for the spirit to touch. And the vision is delivered to one person, but then it catches fire in the community. And so the way it catches fire is because you all are taking a look at what God is bringing forth. And eventually, you're going to see something and you're going to say, yeah, that's it. And, um, and so, so we invite you, um, pray to God, write down the vision, um, take a look as the visions come forward so that we may know what is the vision that God is putting on your hearts so we can be who God needs us to be. This is the fourth Sunday. On the fourth Sunday, we take a special offering. We call it our helping hands offering. Um, we have our general offering. We have our general offering. That general offering goes to support um, our general operations, and so those will be coming through the, the brass plates. And then our special offering is the Helping Hands offering. Um, that's in a basket right here at the altar. We invite you to come forward. That's the money that we use for all of our ministries that support people in need. Um, the, the food pantry where we feed 125 people every week, and we thank you, everybody who volunteers for that program. Uh, the Laundry Love, where once a month we are going to a laundromat and we're doing the, the laundry um, for individuals who are living on the street or people who are, who are in poverty, um, as well as our Benevolence Fund, where we're helping people to keep the lights on and stay in their homes and pay the rent. And so we really encourage you to give as God is blessing you. Um, I am reminded there is one other announcement that I forgot. Um, this Saturday is the first Saturday of the month, and on the first Saturday of the month um, we do hold our uh, monthly meditation um, and so um, we do encourage you to stop by. It's done in the Ryland Room um, on Saturday afternoon for about an hour and a half. Um, we do encourage you to check it out. It's a safe space, a space just to kind of pray and listen deeply for um, decompress and listen to what Spirit is blessing you with. Um, please give as you're able. Thank you.
sun. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks unto the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ, God's Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what our God has done. Creator God, indeed, we do give thanks. We give thanks to you today. We give thanks to you for the blessing of your and the power of your Holy Spirit that continues to animate our lives and continues to help us to dance. We give you thanks for all the gifts that have been given, the time, the talent, the treasure, the prayers, the presence of your holy people. We ask that you bless these gifts so freely offered that we may use these gifts to magnify your love and multiply your justice in our community, our city, and in our world. Amen. in the spirit of prayer. Get yourselves with a mind to thank God for all that has happened and is good. Sometimes the bad is really the good in our lives because it causes us to, to know and do, to know who is in charge. I'm here right now to remind you who is in charge. Dear God, we thank you for all that you offer to us and for all that you wait on us to receive. God, what if we really and truly could just let go and, and just let you take over our lives and, and do what you really want to do with us? Use the gifts that you have given us to be a blessing to others. We thank you for this building, this, this building where we can gather together. Two or three, you said, gathered in your name, we build strength. We thank you for our 
coming together this morning. We thank you for our coming together on yesterday in our meeting that offered us the courage and the, the go forwardness in spirit that we needed. We thank you, God, for your healing power among us. Oh, there was a time that we were so sick. My family was so sick. Our community was so sick. And everyone was saying that you had turned your back, but you let your healing power come down and touch our bodies. We were healed. You opened our minds up, God, and you showed us for the tears that we shed, for the tears that you shed, for the ones that you wipe away, for the sickness that we still have, for those who are looking for work, for those who are looking for a home, for those who have sick people, sick parents, sick sisters, sick brothers, not able to be there. We ask that your spirit just give them glory and strength that they will know you're there. You're always there. You're always there. With me and my bereaved family this morning, God, I ask you to bless my family. I ask you to give us strength. I ask you to help us to once again know our lives matter. Our families matter. The one family we have, God, let everyone, sisters and brothers, in Jesus Christ, be touched, be blessed and be known. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Today we remember. We remember that night. Yes. We remember that night when you met in the upper room and gathered for fellowship and worship and for prayer. Remember that your heart was heavy for you knew that there were those who were about to betray you. Yes. And we remember that you took the bread and you blessed it and the cup and you gave thanks. And then you freely gave it to those who are gathered there saying, take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. And today, Today we remember another night, a night when we believe that you are also present. Our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ took bread and he broke it. He offered it to his friends who were sitting at that table with him. After giving thanks to his Father in heaven, he said, this is my body. It was broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. When you're down, when you're out, when you feel that you cannot make it, when every job review you've been on, they cannot take you. Jesus said, remember me. Then he took the cup and in like manner, he lifted it up. He gave thanks to his Father in heaven and then he offered it to his friends who were sitting at that table. We are his friends. Yes. He is our friend. Yes, he said, this is my blood. This is my blood. You are good enough to die for. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. When you eat of this bread and when you drink from this cup you are reminded of my death my burial my resurrection for you hallelujah hallelujah and so today as we come to this table we we do remember another night it is a night which is part of our collective history, the Metropolitan Community Churches. Yes. It is a night when we also believe that Jesus was present. Yes. They gathered, not in the upper room, but in the upstairs lounge. Yes. 
they gathered not in Jerusalem, but in New Orleans. Nevertheless, they too gathered. They gathered for fellowship and they gathered for worship and certainly the bread was broken and the cup was shared. Yes. And so today we remember and we dedicate this communion meal in remembrance. In remembrance of the 30 people from the MCC in New Orleans who in 1974 died on an evening when they were betrayed and somebody firebombed them in their house of worship. Ours is a risky ministry. It's the ministry of not conforming. It's the ministry of pushing boundaries. It's the ministry of being present when we need to be present where we need to go in order to be God's hope and God's love made real. You need not belong to this church or any church. Wherever you are on your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome to come forward to this table. Hallelujah. You only need to desire a closer relationship with your creator. So come. Come as the ushers direct you, but come not because you must, but because you may. Hallelujah. I now invite the servers, the acolytes, the ushers to come forward that we may prepare for this holy feast.
we move through this series where we're inviting the imagination and wonder in play, from time to time we're going to mix a few things up in the middle of worship. And so today, one of the things we're mix mixing up is that we're going to have a responsive benediction. So I invite you now to join with me as together we bless one another as we prepare to head out into the world. Our God, who is gracious, sends us out to be a blessing. With our hearts, we will sing God's praises. With our hands, we will serve God's people. Jesus, who is our brother, sends us to be with others. We will conquer all whose heads be troubled. We will go to hell to pride. The Holy Spirit, who is advocate, sends us into a broken world. For we justice for all, for all who are oppressed. We, we will teach songs of hope to all who despair. Let us rise as we are able for and join in our closing song. Thank you. Thank 